first years, this way, please. Come on now, first years, don't be shy. Come on now, hurry up. Out. A Slytherin will use the rules to achieve their ends. A Ravenclaw will question why the rules even exist, all the while obeying the rules. A Hufflepuff will enforce the rules for the benefit of everyone. A Gryffindor will break the rules for what they believe is right. So, in that way, the Hogwarts houses, they represent ideologies, mindsets, and ways of thinking. They don't represent um, people and behaviours, necessarily. When I call your name, you will come forth. I shall place the sorting hat on your head and you will be sorted into your houses. You can have cowardly Gryffindors and brave Slytherins and stupid Ravenclaws. I think that the houses just are there to, to tell us about different ways of thinking. The Slytherin is very um, structurally minded, so their, their mind will always try to create a structure from everything that they learn. Whereas the Gryffindor will try and defy structures. They do not like authority very much. They will try to um, break the rules for everything that they believe is right. They are often very opposed uh, to rules. The Ravenclaw represents the intelligentsia. Ravenclaw <clears throat> is the house that is, loves learning for the sake of learning. Uh, one of the attributes, obviously, of, of such a house is the, um, is the fact that the house will obviously produce a lot of um, academically capable students. But the Ravenclaw does not necessarily mean that this, um, this student is going to be academically brilliant. It just means that the student will be a, a free thinker because the ideology behind Ravenclaw House is of um, free thinking. They will question things a lot. They will question ideologies. They will question why things are put in place. But the Ravenclaw is not inclined to really make any change. Um, they will always feel um, slightly uncomfortable with, with the system, uncomfortable enough to question it, but not uncomfortable enough to actually make any change. In that way, they stay um, very well within, within systems and within established um, orders. The Gryffindor, on the other hand, is the rule breaker. This is the the sort of moral hero that we, we see often in archetypal stories. The Gryffindor wants change. They question the rules and they want the change. They will make those changes, if it, even if it means standing alone against the entire system. I think they, they kind of get off on that. <laughs> the, the lone uh, sort of wolf that's able to stand um, amongst stand against sorry the, the entire system and we see that even with the character of Hermione Granger she, and this isn't really in the movie I don't think it's even mentioned once in the movie but she started um, a, a house elf freedom campaign uh, where she wanted to free all house elves or at least get them paid work uh, that's a very Gryffindor thing to do, to go against the established order completely. I mean, house elves have a specific purpose and function, but the Gryffindor will often ignore established orders and ignore um, even the function of a particular thing because they feel it, it, that it is, is wrong. 
so they they often act rashly because their feeling is is, is stronger um, a lot of the times than than the way they think uh, when we look at the house of uh, the house of um, freedom campaign that hermione was running house elves did not want to be free but hermione regardless of that still pushed that agenda which is again why she's a, a Gryffindor and not a Ravenclaw, despite being ex extremely intelligent, as we would expect of Ravenclaw students, which goes into the topic of characteristics versus attributes. So an attribute of Ravenclaw house is um, intelligent, intelligent students, but it, it's not a characteristic. A characteristic is an intrinsic um, part of something and an attribute is the feature that that characteristic produces so a characteristic of Ravenclaw house is their is their free thinking and an attribute of that is the intelligence because when we have people who have the ability to think freely and to explore various ideas they tend to come across at, at the very least as intelligent When we look at Slytherins, we find a house that is very bent on tradition and upholding the structures. A Slytherin operates um, best within a system. They set the rules in place. They put the pillars up for everyone to see. And once the structure is clear, the Slytherin will use the structure to achieve their ends. That's the way Slytherins operate. Um, so in that way, they are very much going to want to conserve the systems and the, the structures in place because that is how they work. Everything is, is, is a means to an end for the Slytherin, but they like to be in control of the system. Out of all of the houses, this is the house with the, the most need for there to be control and an order of some sort. I think the other house that really benefits from a system is Hufflepuff. The Hufflepuff is the enforcer of the rules. They look for order, they look for justice, but rather than using the system for themselves, the Hufflepuff will use the system for the benefit of everyone else. They will use the system to ensure that people are treated fairly. They are the 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 people who will um, be mostly in, in law and order. In fact, we have two notable auras in the in the books, Nymphadora Tonks and I think Madame Bones are both auras. They both work in law enforcement. So the two notable sort of, re um, sorry, Hufflepuffs in the book um, working in enforcing the system, not necessarily rebelling against it. And I think that's a, I think that was put there specifically to almost reinforce the ideology behind the houses because they represent a, a mindset, a way, a way of thinking, and not necessarily individual people. 